Calvin. You look well. You really look well. How's Malta? Bloody sight warmer than this place. How are you? You look very smart. Must give you good clothing allowance and intelligence. 
You get remarks for ballpoint pens and paper clips. Ah, it's a man's life, is it? Danger lurks behind every filing cabinet. How's it feel to be back at headquarters? The Mediterranean fleet will be floundering without me. Are you going to tell me why I've been brought here? No, I not. Well, that was my idea, I said. Yeah. We've got this sort of problem, you see. Mm -hmm. And you being so clever with, well, you know, nautical things, underwater and all that. You mean if it's wet, I'm your man? Mm, so to speak. So why have I been brought here? Am I going to be the world's first underwater spy? <laughs> yes, that's rather funny. I like that. No, it's about these ships, bullion vessels, hijacked off the face of the earth, or rather the high seas, by human exiles. Philip, please. It is, as they say, a matter of national importance. Well, I shouldn't think the nation gives a damn. It's not their gold. The same story each time. Crews put ashore in some deserted place in Ireland, then released a few days later, by which time ships, of course, taken to God knows where. Uh huh. What are we supposed to do to save the nation for democracy? Well, between the two of us, Philip, what with my organizational genius and your more physical talents, we have to evolve a master plan to take before the big white chief. Which is whom? Sir Arthur Arnford Jones, KCB, etc., etc., etc. Yes, quite an impressive record, I suppose. I see here that, like all men employed in highly specialized branches, you have a rather questionable attitude towards authority. I don't know that I care for that. It says here, unsuitable for routine investigation. Operates best under conditions of extreme pressure. At this level, he's unique. Do you suppose that's true? Well, it must be if it's on the fire. <laughs> I'm not happy about this. Yes, do sit down. I'm not happy about this, Calvert. I should have preferred my own men to have handled this with the assistance of Lord Charnley and Lloyd's, of course. As it is, I have everybody breathing down my neck. The Admiralty, the government, the Americans, and the insurance assessors. Grubby little men with gabardine raincoats and dandruff. Well, I don't have dandruff, sir, if it's any consolation. But I don't think you need demonstrate your questionable attitude to authority quite so early. Well, now, what have you and Mr... Um... Hunslet, sir. Hunslet. Hunslet. What have you come up with? Right, it's this. Let's conceal two men with the transmitter on the next bullion ship so that if she's hijacked, we'll know exactly where she is. The men can send signals at prearranged times and frequencies, and we can take cross bearings. It may be that Mr. Hunslet and myself would then be able to shadow the ship with their own boat. Could men be concealed like that? I mean, it seems rather far-fetched. Because I don't like it. It's too dangerous. Too many ifs and buts. Well, with all due respect, you haven't had an if or a but yet, have you? Now, the next ship is the Nanceville. Eight million quid's worth of gold bullion. Surely that's worth a risk or two, isn't it? I insist on using my own men. OK. I met them last night. They should be able to take care of themselves. They're excellent men. They could certainly look after themselves. Show them in, Mr... Hunslet. Come in, gentlemen.
him up. How did he go? Not good. Let's get out of this bloody armor. What was not good about it? Too strong an opposition. They were good men. Well, the enemy were better. I'm afraid Uncle Arthur's not going to like this. Now, do you think I like it? Well, so much for our master plan. There's nothing wrong with that. They were able to transmit and we were able to follow. It was all justified. If you discount loss of life, that is. Do you? No, I don't. That's the trouble. Yes. Yeah. I made something to drink. I see you've been having a hard night. Well, by me, I'm intelligent, aren't I? I have to stay in and think in broad concepts while you go out and implement, as it were. You mean I get half strangled and kicked to death while you sit here making bloody cocoa? That's what I do well. Let's have some whiskey. You better bandage my leg. We don't want blood all over the floor if we have visitors, do we? Do you want some? No, thanks. Surely the Nanceville will be halfway to God knows where by now, wouldn't it? Yes, I know. But they did come here in the first place, so we could assume that the area is significant. And therefore, they could have people in the area. And we are new arrivals in Torbay. God almighty, be careful, you're hurting me. Sorry, we didn't learn first aid and intelligence. No. Oh. Uh, is that tight enough? Okay. Mm. Thanks. What time is it? 6.25. We have to radio Uncle Arthur at 8. Well, I'll say it this for him. He does get to work early, doesn't he? Good morning, sir. Any news from Buttercup? Buttercup? Daisy. Oh, you mean Caroline, sir? Any moment now. This is Annabelle calling Caroline. Use the scrambler procedure. Good morning. This is Caroline. May I speak to Annabelle, please? Good morning, Caroline. This is Annabelle. Location 481.281, west of Scotland, a place called Loch Huron. I have you. Have you located the missing vessel? I have. Where is it? Where was it, you mean? Could be a hundred miles away by now. Any direction. Different colours, different markings, different flags. Well, what about our friends? They won't be coming home again. I've been aboard, but I was expected. I warned you about this, Caroline. Phil! Someone's coming! You've messed up the whole thing. Sorry, must pack up. Visitors. Any usefulness or effectiveness you might have had has now been entirely dissipated. Can't talk now. Goodbye. We've lost two friends. We've lost the vessel. We've lost the element of secrecy. Afraid we've lost him, sir. Calvert. Calvert! Hurry, Phil, hurry! <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. You brought the milk. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sergeant MacDonald from Torbay Police Station. These two gentlemen are customs officials. Are they now? It's been an interesting life. Is this your boat, sir? Yes, it is. Rather, it's my employers. And uh, who is that? The government. The government? Yes. Didn't you see the flag? Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. Marine biologists. We're a kind of floating laboratory, if you like. All sorts of odd specimens. I'm uh, sorry, sir. If we're looking for chemicals, they were stolen from a lorry on the coast of Ayrshire last night. Ah. Apparently, they came north by sea. This is the third port we have checked, and the thirteenth boat. Just uh, routine, you say? Well, you must be exhausted. 
Why don't you come below? My friend makes very good cocoa, don't you? Cheers. Thank you. I wonder if I might photocopy these. Sure. Have you got enough room? Yes, I can manage here with a portable photocopier. Okay. Well, gentlemen, you're welcome to look around if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. If you wouldn't mind, Mr. Calvert, I'd like to see the engine rooms. And perhaps Mr. Hunslet will show the sergeant the living quarters. This way. You carry a lot of batteries, Mr. Calvert. Why all the power? Well, we've got eight electric motors in the lab. And they can only be used when we're in harbour, which means we can't use the generators or the engines to supply the juice for too much interference. Then there's the central heating, the hot and cold water supplies, and electric winches. And, of course, my electric toothbrush. Yes. Yes, of course, sir. Boats aren't really my line. The law were genuine. You can't imitate coppers as good as that. The customs weren't. They said they'd been on 13 boats. They look as if they'd just come out of the dry cleaners. One of them said, boats on my line. Now, what sort of remark is that for a customs man to make? It's like Uncle Arthur saying he's never heard of cricket. <laughs> Here, I'll tell you something else. What? They didn't have a photocopier. Ah. No respect for other people's property. There's blood all over it. He must have hurt himself. That's why he didn't take his gloves off. He hurt his hand. Did he? Yes, I shoved a knife through it. Last night on the Nanceville. Did you? Yes. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Ah, good morning. You have not brought very nice weather with you. No, I haven't, have I? May I use your phone? I, I want long distance. None of the phones are working. I heard the wires are down. Where's the nearest phone? At the mainland, but the boat sailed this morning. I'm afraid it won't be back for four days. Well, I'd better stock up on some tobacco, hadn't I? Could be a long winter. You'll not find many marine specimens up here, Mr. Calvert. Ah, oh, just getting some exercise, Sergeant. Cooped up on that boat all day. Just want to stretch my legs. It's a long stretch from Torbay. Good for one, though. Wonderful air you have up here. It's a pity about those telephone wires. Didn't know it was that stormy last night. Well, surely you felt it, if you were cooped up in that boat all night. By the way, our radio was smashed up. Was it? Well, you weren't the only ones. So was the Shangri-La. We'll be looking into it, of course. Ah, oh, that is reassuring. Who's on the Shangri-La? Sir Anthony Scourist. A Scourist, the shipping man? Big oily separate, that Scourist? Sir Anthony Scourist. There's not a kinder man sailed into Torbay. Oh, no offence. Good old Scourist. Aye, well, he'd be as well not to offend his name around here. Especially in front of me. I lost two sons very tragically last year. And Sir Anthony was most kind to us in the time of grief. Good day to you.
darkness will be watching you. Well, I hope you'll learn something. Haven't I worked today? Haven't I found out some things? Thinking in broad concepts, were you? How long have you been in the pub? Oh, I had to. I needed a few more whiskies to get the locals around here to loosen up. I'm going to claim expenses. Not exactly full of Scottish hospitality, are they? Mm. What did you find out? Well, firstly, it's an accident-prone area, or at least recently. Disasters at sea, deaths, disappearances, fishing boats, yachts. Exactly when, I wonder? What else did you find out? Well, personal tragedy ashore as well. Oh, something else. You know that boat belongs to? Scurus, yes, I know. Oh, you do? Well, what have you discovered? Why are you so messy? I happened to bump into this wild gypsy girl in the heather, that's all. Hey, Phil, look. What are they signaling? Um, uh, I don't know. They didn't teach us that in intelligence. Let's see. Huh? What is it? What does it say? What's the message? Message reads, drinks at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's like Sotheby's afloat. How do people get to be this rich? Maybe they hijack bullion ships. We're on the wrong side, aren't we? There's only one side to be on. That's the winning one. <clears throat> My apologies, gentlemen. My apologies. But we were combining business with dinner, which is not only impolite, but bad for the digestion. <laughs> My name is Philip Calvert. How do you do? This is my friend Roy Huntley. How do you do? We thought that it was time that we should meet our new neighbors. Um, may I introduce Mr. Lavosky, Mr. McCullum, oh, and uh, Lady Skouras. I should have introduced you first, darling. You should have, but you rarely do. Charlotte. Lady Skouras? Charlotte. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, would you chaps prefer to stay with whiskey, or would you like an after-dinner brandy? Uh, no, thanks. We'll stick to whiskey, thank you. Uh, we've already dined out on my friend's beans on toast and frozen beef burgers. The brandy wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to whiskey, too, but out of chauvinism. How do you like this part of the world? Is it wet enough for you? Well, we're working. So it doesn't very much matter. They're marine biologists, McCallum. Word gets around very quickly. Oh, Sir Anthony knows everything that goes on in Torbay. He's been cruising here for several seasons now. Yes, the south of France and the Aegean can't hold a candle to these waters. That's true. Who wants to cruise around the Greek Isles in all that boring sunshine when you can have a whole month of freezing wind and rain up here? Charlotte's idea of yachting is an expensive floating wardrobe permanently moored to a key, preferably on the Côte d'Azur. Preferably. <laughs> With a lot of bronzed young men flexing their hairdos. Excuse the bitching. We're having one of our generation gap evenings. Come along, Charlotte. It's only a few weeks a year. Do you know how Anthony loves it all here? He does too. Sir Anthony has done many fine and charitable things in this area. Yes, so I hear. You know, good works and public services are very easy for the rich. As easy as signing a check. Charlotte. I think that's rather unfair. Fetch me that picture. Please. You see, gentlemen, despite Charlotte's cynicism, my motives were completely genuine. My wife. Um, that is, my first wife, Anna. My wife and I grew attached to this part of Scotland 
on our honeymoon many years ago. And it's never easy to sign a check, Mr. Calvert. Especially when you're rich. Well, it's always good to see how the other half sail. It's nice to see the other half seeing the other half. Perhaps we should drink to those in peril on the sea. Are we in peril? There's always peril in these waters. Cheers. Good health. Good wealth. Calling Caroline. Caroline, this is station SFPX. Repeat, SFPX. Are you receiving me? Repeat, are you receiving me? Over. You should have radioed Uncle Arthur an hour ago, remember? Well, the weight won't hurt him. You can have another bottle of port at the club. Is that rope tight? Well, I think so. I'm not awfully good at knots. They didn't... I know, they didn't teach you that in intelligence. <laughs> Bloody fellow, you know. North of England Grammar School. Working his way through the ranks of life type. No background. Perhaps something's gone wrong. He needn't have rushed dinner. I hate rushing dinner. Maybe he's in some danger. Might have tried some of that stilt, and I thought it looked rather good. Mind you, you never know. What? I said he may be in some danger. Got hurt or something. Let's hope it's nothing trivial. Well, now we know why a couple of scruffs like us would ask over for drinks. I'd better get on the blower. Excuse me, sir. Caroline calling. It never stops. Come on. There's a boat here with a very definite connection. Now, they had their transmitter smashed, too. But that could be a cover. They had us over tonight for drinks. Anyway, they searched the fire crest. It's a very strange setup. There's a husband and wife who don't seem to be able to stand each other, and a man who presides over them to see that they do. The husband's name is Scudas. Sir Anthony Scudas. Sir Anthony Scudas? Well, don't you know who he is? A man with his record in public life? All right, all right. It's not all right. Sir Anthony is one of the most distinguished members of my own club. He's on the wine committee. With all due respect, Annabel, sir, there's no need to go into cardiac arrest just because I don't share your touching faith in the probity of your fellow members. That'll be quite enough of that, Buttercup. You'll report to this office at 12 noon tomorrow. A helicopter will pick you up at 5. Sir, I think you ought to let me stay on until I can at least... I think not, Buttercup. The sooner you stop chasing red headings and get back here, the better for all of us. At least put some wheels in motion for me. Check some facts. Very well, if they're valid. There you are. What? Oh, thank you. Hopeless fellow, you know, comes of not going to a proper school. Where's the paper? You do it. Carry on, Caroline. Oh, <laughs> Caroline. Far ahead! Second thoughts? No, it's worth a chance. If I'm wrong, all I've got to lose is my rank job and pension. Well, I hope that's all you lose. Cheers. Lieutenant Williams. You, Calvert? Commander Calvert. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, sir. That's all right. The reason I'm pulling rank is because I'm changing your orders. Do you know this area well? Very well. But listen, I'm supposed to take you to London. Sir. Yes, sir. We go to London some other time, all right? That's an order. I take full responsibility, OK? OK, sir. I mean, yes, sir. Good. Have a cigarette. 
Forget about the sirs. Thank you. See, I need an excuse to search the area. Can you put out a false mayday in your radio? I want the BBC to pick it up. You're kidding. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. It can be done, sir. <laughs> of the Clyde shipyards be maintained. A boat is in trouble somewhere north of the island of Skye. A distress signal was picked up early this morning from the TSDY Mori Rose, reported not under command and making water fast. Air Sea Rescue Services have been alerted. Further deterioration well, in the weather is predicted. A force... <laughs> a hideout. Probably a boat as well. A motor launch or something. Might be a big boathouse. Might even be a tiny harbour invisible from the sea. Anyway, somewhere between the islands of Isle and Sky. Can't be more than a thousand miles of coastline. What do we do after lunch? Let's have a look at that. Over there. Okay. Helicopter's not spying. It's air sea rescue. I heard something about a missing boat on the radio. Perhaps you'll rescue me from this monotony. I could suggest many ways you could rescue yourself from this monotony. Shut up! Both of you! More harbor. What are they, whale hunters? Sharks. For the liver oil. I've been there once. I'd vouch for them. Boss goes by the name of Hutchison, Tim Hutchison. Let's go and say hello. Thank you. Even from that smell? What smell? Listener, can you help me? Have you seen any strange boats in the area? Over the last few months, maybe? 
half hidden or moored. No, I don't think so. But we'll keep our eyes open. Thanks. Any news of Calvert? I'm afraid not, sir. What's happened to the bloody fellow? All I know is we haven't heard from the helicopter yet, sir. Haven't you any proper biscuits? Beg your pardon, sir. Proper biscuits, the ones with the cream inside. Never mind. What's this? And that's the information you asked for, sir. Look at this place. It's called Belnan Ui. What? Belnan Ui. It's Gaelic. It means the mouth of the grave. Look, Huron. That castle there is called Duskia, home of Lord Kirkside. Engine failure or something? Air Sea Rescue, Miss. Uh... This isn't sea, this is land, private land. Why the natives so hostile? I only want to ask a few questions. I don't want to storm the castle. Where's your old man? I assume you mean Lord Kirkside. If you're the daughter, that's what I mean. Where's your old man? The old man's over here. Kirkside. Calvert. There's a boat called the Moray Rose. And I heard the news. Well, there's no sign of her around here, no flares. I took a look around the cliffs myself this morning. OK. Sorry about dropping in. Uh, you see, uh, my son and uh, Sue's fiancé, they, they disappeared recently in a flying accident. There have been a lot of pressmen always dropping in. Yeah, I understand. Sorry. We're running out of daylight. Fly over the northern end of the island and then home. a bit dark. The ground should be soggy. So I'll hover. You jump, sir.
Coming up now. Let's go. Dead man. On your right, there's a light switch. Shocking. Very slowly. Switch it off. Thank you, Mr. Calvert. I've already got you for insolence, insubordination, and disobedience. Now it's armed assault. Do you always greet your guests like this? I don't have guests. I don't have friends. I only have enemies. Well, don't stand there. Get me a whiskey and soda. They came by RAF plane and launch. All the bloody people offered me were tea bags and cheese rolls. Where's Hanslet? I know the last time I saw him was this morning. Well, I hope nothing's happened to him. We can't afford to lose any more personnel. Personnel? Well, he's not personnel to me. He's been a friend of mine for the last ten years. While you're on about personnel, I'll tell you another thing. You can add another statistic to your deaths in the line of official government duty, the helicopter pilot. Only by the grace of God, you're not adding mine to it. You were ordered to return. You deliberately disobeyed. I used my better judgment. And as the person on the spot, I consider my judgment more relevant than that of people sitting behind antique desks in elegant Whitehall offices. All right, all right, calm down. I understand your feelings. You're perfectly right about the area. Those wheels you asked me to set in motion. I've come up with one or two answers. It's still your job, Calvert. Thank you, sir. Now then. You wanted to know about missing vessels around these coasts. September the 4th, Pinto, cruiser, left the cows of Lockout for Aran, vanished. April the 6th, Evening Star. April the 10th, 
Jenny Rose, both fishing boats. May the 17th sailing boat with highly experienced crew from Londonderry to the north of Scotland. A few weeks ago, the Kingfisher on a night cruise from Tor Bay. What about the dates? Do they match? All within 48 hours of the disappearance of the bullion ships. Well, there have been too many accidents on land as well. A policeman and his family and a local squire and his family. A man by the name of Lord Kirkside, you know him? I read about that. I think we met once, vaguely. Grouse shooting in Peebles. What about the names? I asked you to check them. Lavorsky, Nimri. Nothing came up before I left. I say, do you have anything palatable to eat on this boat? Beans. What about sleeping accommodation? Well, I don't think we will be sleeping tonight. If we assume they've got Hunslet, they'll assume they've got me, so if they see lights, they'll come visiting, won't they? What are we going to do? We manage. <laughs> Where's the other one? About 20 fathoms below. Good Lord, you can't go around acting like a one-man execution squad. This is England. Sir, I know it's all very well for you sitting in an office overlooking the mall. But people like me are just pins on the map, aren't they? That's what it's all about. It's either him or me. Right? I appreciate your point, but as usual, not your manner of making it. What are you going to do with him? Take him ashore, hand him over to the police. I think I should. He's making a terrible mess of the carpet. Why don't you get a bite of something to eat? I'll check up on the local law. You're not going to kill anybody else, are you? Good Lord, no. Promise. Good. I must get some hot food inside me. Bloody RAF with their damn cheese rolls and plastic. You got yourself a walkie-talkie. You wouldn't risk pneumonia having to row across. The Shangri-La? How about these boys of yours that died recently? Who are you? Police? Sort of. I think you'd better come and see a friend of mine. They said they would kill my boys. I've had no choice. I just have to string along with them. Like bringing them as customs men to your boat to smash the radio. Like keeping silent when I see all the criminal goings on around here. People and boats disappear, you know. And some boats get smashed up or they go in certain places at the wrong time. It's incredible. Scurrilous. Yes, sir. There's a Captain Emery sometimes there. And a man called Quinn who came... Sergeant, let me give you some harsh facts of life, may I? My colleague is missing. A naval helicopter pilot was killed today, and I should have been. Forty-eight hours ago, two of Sir Arthur's agents were murdered on a boat out in Loch Huron, right? Now, they may or may not have your boys in safekeeping, I don't know. But you can't afford to take guarantees or promises from them, can you? You've got to help us, and you've got to help us fast. What do you want me to do? It's the door! 
I've seen the dawn before, thank you, Calvert. Duck shooting, was it? Don't be so bloody insolent. Especially at sea. Especially before breakfast. Hey, who's that? I've no idea. Come on. Oh, help! Oh, oh, oh. All right, come on. All right, you say. Yeah. Come on. Up you go. Come on. I wanted to warn you. Last night, the policeman, MacDonald, I think he's called, came aboard. Go on. When he left, they, I mean my husband and the others, they decided you must be stopped. Stopped? You know what I mean. I've known for ages something was wrong. Strange journeys, strange men aboard. Why did you want to warn us? Surely that's obvious. Shut up. Go on. You were the only one around. And I had to get off that boat. Again, why? I wanted to see how the other half sail. You must forgive Mr. Calvert. He has naturally bad manners. Let me help you. You took a great risk coming here, my dear. I had nothing to lose. We've still got a lot to lose. Come on, let's go. We've wasted enough time already. I'm sure it's Loch Huron. Do skier. Must be by process of elimination. The castle's natural base. Someone must have raided from there that I was in the helicopter. Anyway, if there's any more intimidation, it does fit in with the Kirkside situation. Daughter's attitude, etc. Ah, we've got company. They're coming for me. You open the wheelhouse door. Keep it back in the latch and then stand clear. You take the wheel. When I shout, turn it about, then cut the engine off. The ranks of the ungodly are being suitably depleted. I don't think all that killing is necessary just to protect me. Neither do I, love. That was to square things for Hanslid. Why are we going to do skier? Or do I shut up and mind my own business? Yes, I can't take much more of this, you know. We're going to prove that Britannia rules the waves. They know we're onto them. 
And it doesn't give them much time to unload their bullion. Unload the bullion? They can't unload the bullion here. Yes, they can, Loch Huron. My dear boy, you can't hide a freighter the size of the Nanceville in Loch Huron. You've been over the area yourself. It's the easiest thing in the world to hide a ship. All you have to do is open the seacocks. They're not in Loch Huron, they're under it. The young woman made this herself. It ought to be drinkable. Thank you. Did you get through? Yes. Food for thought. There was a Captain Imry in charge of a, a Scudis Line ship, a line on a luxury cruise in 1963. She went down with 70 lives. It would have been a big stink, but the underwriters paid up, and Imry took the whole rap for pilot error. Interesting. I don't quite know what you're getting at, but never mind. Go on. I've told them that Annabelle is alive and well and enjoying the cruise. Did you? Mm -hmm. Tell me about First Lady Scudders. When did she die? About a year ago. Devoted couple? I always thought so. Why? I'm just wondering about the present Lady Scudders. I wonder when she met him. I must have a word with the blushing bride. What are you doing? Taking this boat to Loch Huron and trying to figure you out. I don't know which is more difficult. Why bother? Let's just say that I want to put my mind at ease. There's nothing to know. I married a multimillionaire who turns out to be a crook. That would be all right, so long as he stays a rich crook. But I don't like being caged in with all those other villains. I don't like being kicked around. And I can't stand the Scottish weather. So you walked out? I swam out, remember? Yeah. No regrets about having left anything behind? Yes. A very expensive wardrobe. <laughs> well, maybe you joined the wrong side. Maybe we won't come out on top. I can always swim back. to see you. God, you look terrible. I hope it's not my coffee. Boats would be wonderful. If only one didn't have to go to sea in them. Just keep her running up and down outside. For God's sake, don't get any nearer than we are. All right? of the mainland till midnight, right? It's a hell of a story he's been telling, Sir Arthur, but we'll help you all we can. Anyhow, it makes a change from shark fishing. We'll stay on this boat because it's well known in the area. Tim will take us to Duskiev. First of all, we'll go to that place. I can never pronounce its name. You know, Mouth of the Grave. You'll never sail through there. Of course I will. After a few more of these, Wish you hadn't come.
this is it. If you're sure it's this 14 fathom ledge. It must be. It's the only logical place where you can sink your ship, isn't it? Over here at seven fathoms, the seabed is too flat. No place to hide masks or funnels, but beyond that, over here. 35 fathoms. Too deep, too much pressure. 14 fathoms. The only logical place. Good luck.
the Shangri-La. Get below, you two, in case we've got glasses on us. Oh, it's Hutchinson's boat. Yes, local shark fisherman. No panic, it's all right. Is it? Because nothing has been all right so far, has it? I can't see them unloading all that bullion before tomorrow. Maybe they'll take what they've got and get out. Well, they don't know for sure that we know about the bullion, do they? Anyway, I was lucky. Quinn's death looks like an accident. Are we going in or not? My lads feel like a bit of exercise. First, we go back to your place. They'll get all the exercise they need at midnight. After I make sure other people are safe. Get some beauty sleep. What did you mean about making sure other people are safe? You look pale. You're losing that jet set, Tam. You don't trust me one bloody inch, do you? Doesn't it feel good to be a woman of intrigue? And mystery? Do you want to make love to me? Yes. I wanted to see how the bruises were. They're still there. Do you think I put them on with makeup or something? I'm still not sure how they got there. I was beaten. Maybe a bruise easily. Then you'd better be very gentle with me in bed. I will. I'll even take my boots off. I still haven't worked you out yet. And I don't trust you one bloody inch. Anyway, just for the record. You've been a long time at sea, haven't you?
Wake up, room service. I want to see Miss Kirkside. Move. That's right. That's my boy. Move! That's better. What do you want? What is it? What's going on? Get up and get dressed. What's happening? Move, girl, move. Don't you recognize a knight in shining armor when you see one? You're the man from the helicopter, aren't you? If you've got a belt, a cord or something, a dressing gown cord, wake up, girl! Well, this two, who are you? Don't ask questions. Get some clothes on. What are you doing here? Strangely enough, I'm one of the good guys. Which means that I'm on the side of law and order, and I haven't much time. Right? I want some answers and I want some help. No, please. You mustn't do anything. You mustn't. There are prisoners here, aren't there? Hostages. Aren't there? But they'll be in danger if you do anything. They'll be in a bloody sight more if I don't. Now, listen, things are going to happen here tonight, midnight. That's why I'm here, to get these people away. Your brother and boyfriend. McDonaldson's. Anyone else? Some fisherman and the woman. A woman? What woman? Lady Skouras. Lady Skouras? Where are they? They're in the dungeons. But they're guarded and locked and over the other side of the castle. Come on. Drink or something. I could get some. Whiskey would be nice. You're feeling the heat, are you? Is it loaded? Yeah, it sure is. Sins of the flesh, my friend, never pay. Is it loaded? You must learn more than deer stalking in the Highlands. Come on. Why don't we all go upstairs? It's much warmer up there. There is good as... Good evening. Take everyone to your room, lock yourselves in and keep quiet. What are you going to do? I've told you, I've got till midnight to sort things out. But you... There are complications. I didn't realize that Skouris was a blackmail victim like you. That makes him one of us. Also, they've got one of theirs amongst us. Who's he? It's not a he, it's a she. I should like you to know, Mr. Hutchinson, how much I appreciate your help in this matter. Your sort of loyalty, your sense of duty and public spirit, something one doesn't meet with often in this day and age. Duty, Sir Arthur. Your mate told us how much the insurance companies would be coughing up. Did he? Mr. Kelwood is not my mate. I'm afraid he and I have very little in common. Have you been there before? Do you know the boathouse? Do you know how big it is? Aye, boathouse door is about 17 feet wide. And this boat? All of a 15-foot beam. And we've no beacons. We can never take it in without ending up on the rocks. There's only one way to find out. Besides, your mate would never forgive me.
Club, got it. Watch it. What the fuck? to Skir Castle. I'm afraid we're trespassing. Yes, you are. I believe Calvin is loose somewhere in the grounds. My wife left her last radio message rather late. Your wife? To love, honor, and obey. You know how it goes. You'd better get out of the way, darling. I don't want you to get hurt. then. Well done. I was just coming to lend a hand. He had nothing to do with it. Nothing? Well, of course. That's what I always said, wasn't it? Ha! 
But where's the girl? Yes, I wonder if she knows she's a widow. Excuse me. Ah, oh, there you are. What are you doing? What? You don't think you're going anywhere, do you? You didn't kiss me goodbye. I would have written every day. From sunny Acapulco or somewhere. Or from prison. Well, you do keep rather bad company, don't you? I was only being a loyal wife. And now you're going to be a loyal widow. Then I can make a new start in life. Perhaps with you. And. And what? Some of that gold down there. Perhaps. Who knows? You see, Calvert had the idea, I mean, Calvert and I had the idea of finding out who were the underwriters of that shipping disaster of yours. I never thought of Lord Charnley. Yes, it was Charnley. I was being blackmailed. They needed my finance and they needed my cover. But when they took Anna, my wife, then I had no choice but to go along with them. No choice. Yes, well, of course, I knew it all the time. I mean, one has an instinct about these things, hasn't one? Member of our wine committee. I told Calvert, but of course, you know, he wouldn't listen. The trouble with Calvert, I'm afraid, is he's not really a gentleman, and now I fear he never will be. Where did he get to, by the way? Only one. Have you felt the weight of these bloody things? Yeah. Anyway, that'll keep you in luxury at some hotel in Acapulco for five years. So long as you don't use room service too much. Where are you going? All yours, love. Don't like the sun. Gives me hay fever. Do you want me to stay? I don't want to make an honest woman out of you, if that's what you mean. I don't see us living in domestic bliss, do you? No. The nights would be good, but the days would be a drag. Well, bon voyage. Don't spend it all at once. What chance have I of getting out of here without you? Well, not much of a chance, but a chance anyway. All you're worried about is your job. And you do it right, and that's all you do. The words of a late friend of mine. It's what I do well. <laughs> 